Oyster farming is a big industry in Taiwan and a mainstay of Jiayi County's economy. The southern county can produce large quantities of high-quality seafood, but at a devastating cost to the environment. Nylon ropes used for oyster cultures become hardened by seawater over time and produce over 1,000 tons of waste annually. Conservationists are now working with the industry to process that waste rope and turn it into usable plastic. They hope that adding value to recycled materials will offset the cost of recycling. Let's hear what the experts have to say in our Sunday special report. Between the coastline of Jiayi County in the nearby Waishanding sandbar, there is a channel of water with a surface area roughly 10,000 hectares in size. Throughout the channel, oyster culture rafts can be seen dotting the surface. This oyster farming industry is the pride of Jiayi County residents. Jiayi County's farmed oysters are the best in Taiwan, in my opinion. This is because the water quality is good and the environmental conditions here provide a natural barrier. Therefore, 70% of oysters farmed in Taiwan come from Jiayi County. The industry generates 1.1 billion NT in annual output. At 6 in the morning, boats depart from Jiayi's Dongshi Township. From the break of dawn, the oyster farmer's busy day begins. The farmer skillfully cuts strings of oysters one at a time and throws them into the machine for washing. Before the clock hits 7 o'clock, the farmer's rafts are already loaded up with eight baskets each of fresh oysters, ready to be brought back to shore. Back at Xiazhuang Fishing Harbor, fully loaded fishing boats arrive one after the other. They line up and wait for their hauls to be offloaded onto the pier. At Jiayi's largest oyster processing plant, oysters come in from all of the nearby cities and counties. In the past, oysters would come in covered in mud and you would need to clean them off. But as you can see, these are very clean. The rope and the oysters get separated. A machine separates the oysters from the rope and can process 1,000 baskets of oysters per day. Each basket weighs roughly 100 kilograms, of which 60% is usable product that gets sent to restaurants. The remaining 40% is unusable oysters and rope. The question for farmers is what to do with that 40% waste. In the past, we'd take the oysters brought in and just cut them here. The rope would be stuck in this hole, so you would just mess with it to free it. The waste left behind when you wash the oysters would be swept away, and it would end up in the ditch. So the ditch would get all clogged up. When we looked at footage from underwater cameras, we discovered that the rope would harden and float away before sinking to the sea floor. That's when we realized that there is a problem with waste. Behind Jiayi's thriving oyster farming industry is 1,375 tons of waste oysters and rope generated annually. The nylon ropes used to hang oysters get hardened by seawater, causing them to deform. Some of that sinks to the bottom of the sea, while some of it gets discarded by the side of the road. It's a serious environmental problem. In the past, these waste oysters and rope were randomly discarded or burned. Today, with the local government paying 15 NT per kilogram of the waste, all of it gets piled up here. An excavator moves a pile of the waste to the middle of the road and a steamroller crushes it. The roller goes back and forth over the waste shells and rope at least four times. We like to take the initiative. We work with recyclers who go to set drop-off locations and collect the waste rope. Basically, as long as the oyster farmers bring their waste rope and shells to these fixed locations, our recycling partners will go and pick it up. 
and we purchase it at value. Currently, there are 12 city and county governments that have recycling programs for aquaculture and fisheries equipment. They pay a given amount per kilogram for recycled equipment to the fishers. Things pile up and the scope of the program increasingly grows. What we are hoping for is to establish a business model. After the shells are removed, the waste rope is brought to Formosa Chemicals and Fiber Corporation's plant in Jiayi County's Xingang Township where it is given new life. Before the recycled rope can be processed, it's tested to ensure it's the right material. When recycled materials come into our plant, before processing them, we do an initial inspection with this sensor gun. It's an infrared sensor, and we hold it up like this to test if the material is nylon 6. We can check immediately whether this material meets our requirement. The sensor's display reads N6, showing that the rope is made from nylon 6. Only the waste rope made from nylon 6 is put on the conveyor belt for processing. Through a special chemical process, the recycled nets and ropes are melted down, their constituent components separated and refined. The process produces the raw nylon material caprolactam, which is then polymerized into white nylon pellets. This process was developed specifically for processing nylon waste and reducing it back to caprolactam. We designed it for use with our own waste products. Later on, because of concerns about protecting the marine environment, someone came to us and asked if we could use the process to recycle fishing nets. This is our laboratory for testing chemicals. The nylon pellets we produce are brought to the lab, where they are tested for viscosity, moisture, degree of oxidation, amine content, extractive content, and other chemical properties. Pellets that pass testing are sent to the factory for making nylon thread. At the factory, machines pump out 300 kilometers of nylon thread per hour. What was previously waste that might have ended up in the sea gets new life here as threads of various colors. We take these recycled materials and refine them. Like this spool I have in my hand, the thread is as fine as a strand of hair. We can also add other properties to it, such as making it hydrophilic or cool to the touch or combining it with graphene. That way we can create material with better added value. This process of creating functional threads out of nylon is something that only Taiwan, South Korea, and Italy have done successfully. Popular U.S. outdoor clothing brand Patagonia partners with Formosa Chemicals and Fiber Corporation to create high-value clothing items out of recycled fishing nets and ropes. Since 2018, the partnership has resulted in 4 million articles of clothing. We pay just over 10 NT per kilogram of recycled fishing nets and ropes. When that material is used for clothing, one item of functional clothing may sell for as much as 10,000 NT. That's more than a hundredfold growth in economic value. So we call this the circular economy. The circular economy means that there is an economy for these things after they go through the cycle. However, the process of turning recycled nets and ropes into reusable materials is complicated and every step along the way adds to costs. Therefore, if there is to be a circular economy from recycling marine waste, creating high added value products is imperative. It's possible for a business model to slowly emerge, but the way to support that will be for the products to have a higher value. I think that will make the model attractive. Located in Taichung, the Plastics Industry Development Center is trying to build a circular economy supply chain. It hopes to match sources of recycled materials with brand name companies that will use the materials. Domestic companies are constantly improving their methods of recycling, and we are seeing more and more companies develop new products using recycled materials. For example, these glasses I'm holding are a first-generation product made from recyclables. They are making them more and more colorful all the time. They've since made second and third generation versions. Of course, the process of making these has its challenges. For example, the strength of the product and the way the colors appear. But they can make adjustments to the design and the materials used. In 2021, 
the Ocean Conservation Administration established an alliance to promote sustainability through recycling marine waste and invited several companies to join. In 2020, there were 1,123 tons of marine waste recycled in Taiwan, but in the following year, when the alliance was established, that number grew 70% to reach 2,009 tons. Things are already slowly changing. We are already not thinking about how to reduce costs when recycling marine waste. Now it's all about sustainability or the needs of brand name companies. We are seeing more and more that when companies work with marine waste, their costs will be comparatively higher. Our methods of processing marine waste in Taiwan are way ahead of the rest of the world. We should enlarge the scope and bring a lot more waste in for recycling. Formosa Chemicals and Fiber Corporation aims to recycle up to 750 tons of fishing nets monthly, creating the largest supply chain from recycled nets worldwide. Conservationists hope that through matching recycled nylon with business needs, they can turn trash into treasure.